okay now whenever we are running a business we have three main areas to consider and that is the very basic equation in accounts let me just put that for your attention a equals c plus l a equals a equals c plus l what does it mean those who have learned this uh, formula earlier tell me what do you mean by this a equals c plus l just tell me what is meant by this formula a very basic accountancy formula yes i'm waiting assets equals capital plus liability yes equity is another term for capital assets equal capital plus liability when you look at the formation of any other company than bank or the finance company you will find equity or capital consists of a very good percentage of assets but for the bank maybe the percentage of capital lies set so low as 5%. What does it mean? A bank can grow with very small contribution from the owner. That is not the way many other businesses run. Now, why do you think capital is so small in percentage? means what if assets is 100 if capital is 5 means what liability is 95 percent liability is 95 percent okay tell me what will be the biggest proportion of liabilities of a bank or the finance company Sorry, I can't hear you. You can type. Okay. Very good. That's deposits. Means what? No other company than bank or the finance company can ask deposits from general public. Okay. Suppose you own a company that is manufacturing shoes. It's your money and the liability becomes the bank loans. But when it comes to bank, out of the liability, a greater proportion belongs to general public's deposits. Means what? A finance company or a bank is a place where owners can contribute very less and get more out of it. At whose expenditure? At the depositor's expenditure. For the depositor, you can pay a very small percentage like these days, 4%, 5% as interest and you can run a business out of others money okay right tell me some very natural things happen in this formula right the owners will not hurt much even if the company collapse means what i contribute very less as the owner and the great majority is contributed by depositors therefore i may run this business at a very risky speed i'll take very unnecessary risk why if risk means what higher the risk higher the reward if the company perform well i'll get my dividends i'll get as management i'll get very good salary plus bonuses but if i fail who will be the people who will come and shoulder that's the deposit Therefore, banks should be looking at its core capital very carefully. Banks should be looking at its core capital very carefully. Right. Now, read this one slowly. 
these are directions in terms of section 9 of the finance companies act number 78 of 1988 as amended the monetary board is empowered to issue directions to registered fund okay whatever it is what are we looking at here capital is a key aspect of a business of a registered finance company as it is a source of funding for the business and necessary ingredient for of solvency of such companies therefore in the exercise of powers conferred by the companies act the monetary board hereby issues finance companies minimum core capital direction okay you need not to remember the amounts and uh, the direction number at the moment but get the logic of it every finance company shall at all times maintain an unimpaired core capital not less than 400 million subject to the changes Whereas a registered finance company has failed to comply with this direction, the total amount of deposit liabilities and debt shall be kept at the levels at the end of the month in which the non-compliance was confirmed. The company shall not pay dividend until the minimum capital requirement is complied with and is confirmed to the satisfaction of the director. Means what? A finance company after taking a massive risk in lending, would not worry much about the risk undertaken, but would pay dividends. Why? The dividends are coming out of the contribution from depositors. Depositors has contributed a very good amount, say 95% or 90%. Right. In this direction, core capital shall have same definition as contained in the finance company's risk-weighted capital adequacy ratio. Right. So the director means director of department of supervision of NBFIs. Okay. Today, you will get an understanding. Next week, we'll do some calculations. How to calculate capital adequacy ratio right? but today we'll just get an understanding what do you mean by core core means the center right uh, think about a tree trunk you have core at the center which is the strongest part the tree is not falling or bent why the core is strong you need a very strong core. Okay. Now, that core capital means the capital that will remain in the business until it is liquidated. Okay. So next week, uh, I will give you what are the elements of core capital? What are the elements of tier one capital? Okay. So uh, uh, simple or similar word for core capital is tier one capital okay. but what consists of tier one capital what consists of core capital paid up authorized ordinary shares general reserves statutory reserves unpublished profit and loss account published profit and loss account retained profits now these are the elements of core capital means what these things will remain in the business until it is dissolved okay so we are looking at the capital adequacy ratio okay how much capital should a business have for that we call capital adequacy ratio okay. i know today you will find certain things a uh, little bit difficult to understand right so today just go through these slides read out these things next week i'll show you mathematically how do you calculate these things okay capital adequacy ratio the elements are there that capital will remain in your business until you dissolve it then there is another one supplementary capital so you can clearly understand it is not the core but 
the wings lies outside just outside co supplementary capital we use another nice word for it here to now cumulative redeemable preferred shares is an example for supplementary capital debentures means what let's say debentures they have a clear maturity means what you can collect money from general uh, from others by issuing debentures a debt instrument but that debt has a maturity date it will not remain in the business until you dissolve it well ahead of liquidating the business you may have to settle the debentures cumulative redeemable preferred shares is something like that there is a term we use preference shares, which may have a maturity date. Redeemable. They can redeem these shares. So they are not part of core capital. Right. Today, we will just discuss like this. Right. Next, you have bad and doubtful debts. Right. Now, Capital side, it's 5%. What consists of capital? Basically paid up authorized equity, shares. Then we said liabilities. What consists liabilities mostly? That is deposits. Okay, now you are clear about that. Think about the other side of the equation, A. What do you mean by A? Assets. Okay, what do you think? Okay, what will be the big components of assets of a bank or a finance company? Loans, very good. The recoverables, loans given, lease rental receivables, credit card rentals receivables, loans, that's your assets. Okay, when you think about assets, the more you give assets, the company will grow okay the more you give loans your asset base will grow right now let's say at the very beginning you have given loans 100 rupees how this is balanced five belongs to owners and 95 percent belong to depositors that is the very beginning now you can give more and more loans right what is happening suppose you give 200 loans giving loans is not a big issue the issue, real issue is giving loans which can be recovered so without any problem any fool can give away money so 200 i'm giving away i doubled my performance and still my contribution is five okay now how much should the depositors contribute to balance this equation how much should depositors contribute to balance this equation now i have doubled my performance okay 195 means what now I gave away loans without much deliberation. I was not worried about whether I can recover this money. But I gave this money at a very high interest rate. Right? And if they all pay, still my capital is five. Means what? I can pay a huge dividend to me. Out of whose money? This 195 of depositors' money. That's where I must be worried about doubtful debts okay every finance company shall classify accommodation as non-performing where payment or principal or interest have been in areas for the period of six months or more right so you can read this document carefully the more i perform the more 
I will ask from the general public, if everything goes well, I am really happy. That's where provisioning is needed for bad and doubtful days. Okay. Today, I'm simply going through these things, leaving you time to read them very carefully. Okay. Now, this one, I'll leave you to read very carefully for two minutes. Read it very carefully. After that, I'll discuss. Take your time. Read carefully. Okay. Single borrower limit. Okay. Now, we can see in this formula, I contribute just five rupees. 95% general public contribute. And this collected 100 rupees, I give out as loans. When the company grows, when more depositors come, I can grow this business further. Now, just imagine this. After obtaining this finance license, which I can do a finance company, I'll put five rupees from my end as the owner and collect 95 rupees from general public. After doing that, I give away this 100 rupees to my wife to start a business. Now, what is happening? I am giving away more than what I could have given her to run a business. I had only five rupees. If my wife wanted to start a business, the maximum I could have given her was five rupees. Now I started a finance company and I just put five. Now I am in the position of giving my wife not just five rupees, but hundred rupees. Okay. Now, if her business fails, I lose only five rupees. Who will lose most? Yes, that's depositors. Okay. Now, if there is a limit of giving loans for an individual, a, top, a higher ceiling of giving loans to an individual, what will happen? That's where single borrower limit comes, SBL. Number three, the maximum of a single accommodation or the aggregate of accommodations granted by a finance company and outstanding at any point of time from any group of borrowers, from subsidiary companies and or associate companies of such finance companies shall not exceed 20% of capital of funds of such finance company as shown in the last audited balance sheet. Okay. Now, when I'm giving away loans, I can give loans to my own company, a subsidiary. So you have seen finance companies, startup subsidiaries, bank startup finance companies as a subsidiary, that finance company in return start up some other companies as subsidiaries. Let's say People's Bank, mother company, which is a commercial bank, start up a subsidiary, People's Leasing and Finance PLC, where 75% belongs to People's Bank. The rest, since it's a listed company, 25% belong to general public. Okay. Now, that People's Leasing and Finance company start up subsidiaries. It start a subsidiary called People's Insurance PLC, where 75% belongs to People's Leasing and 25% to general public since it's a listed company. In addition to that, they have other companies like uh, property company, 100% belong to uh, People's Leasing company. That's how the structures are created. On such, if People's Leasing is giving more loans to its subsidiary, Okay, then if that subsidiary fails, 
that will dramatically affect the mother company. That's why you have a single borrower limit, a maximum ceiling of giving away loans, single accommodations granted to an outstanding in respect of categories of borrowers referred to paragraph two and three here of each of which exceeds 10% of capital funds of finance company. Okay, right. So you are putting upper ceilings. You can give loans to your uh, sub subsidiaries, associates, or any other part, but the maximum, there is a limit. The maximum of a single unsecured accommodation what do you mean by unsecured accommodation? Can someone tell me what is meant by unsecured accommodation? Can someone tell me what is meant by unsecured accommodation? Yeah. Secured, right. Security. What do you mean by security? Here in banks. Secured or security. Collateral. What do you mean by that here? Very good. Now loans given in clean basis is called unsecured loans. Right. For those who are not familiar with this term clean loans. Right. Now that's a term uh, known in the finance industry where you give a loan without a security. Means what? When I'm giving you a loan, I want to mortgage an asset which is belonging to you. Okay. When I'm giving you a housing loan, I take the property's ownership to my name. When I'm giving you a leasing facility, the vehicle's ownership, absolute ownership belongs to me. That is shown in the RMV book, absolute owner, XYZ leasing company or finance company. Now that is a secured loan. What is unsecured loan? I will give you a loan with no security attached. Okay. That is known as unsecured loans. What? The maximum of a single unsecured accommodation or the aggregate, okay, unsecured accommodation granted by a finance company and outstanding at any point of time from a single borrower shall not exceed 1% of the core capital. Okay. The aggregate of unsecured accommodation granted to an outstanding at any point of time from all borrowers shall not exceed 5% of capital funds. Okay. Right. Right. Now here, when I'm saying I'm giving you a loan, right? you come to me to take a loan and I would say the value of the vehicle is 7 million. So you're asking me a leasing facility for 7 million. Right? Then I obtain a valuation report of the vehicle okay the valuation report says the vehicle is 10 million but then i get the absolute ownership of this vehicle to my name a 10 million asset now belong to me against that asset i give away 
seven million to you. Am I secured? Am I safe and secured now? Yes. But you come to me and say, I need seven million and I don't have any asset. Okay. I don't have any asset. Then I'll ask you, okay, what is the purpose of asking this seven million? Then you would say, I'm a businessman. I have three, okay, three cars and 10 vans. Okay. And all of them are on leasing taken from a finance company. I need another seven million to pay salaries of my staff for three months because due to COVID-19 no tourists came to Sri Lanka during this time and now I find it's difficult to pay salaries to my staff and we are running a tourist uh, tour package company. These vehicles are on loan therefore I cannot give these vehicles to you since the absolute ownership is already given to XYZ finance company. I don't have any other asset, but I need this 7 million to run at least to maintain this business for three months. After three months, I believe tourists will come. Now, what I'm asking you, give me 7 million, but I don't have any security to give to you. That is a unsecured loan. Got it? Right. Now, unsecured loans are high risk. Why? If I don't pay this 7 million, you don't have any mechanism to collect it from me. In previous example, when I'm getting a vehicle from you, if I don't pay the 7 million, you can sell out the vehicle. The valuation at that moment was 10 million. At least you would get 9 million and you are safe and secure. That is a secured loan. Unsecured loan no security attached for the purpose of this paragraph unsecured accommodation means accommodation made without a security or any accommodation with the security consisting of assets the market value of which is not adequate to cover at least 75 percent <laughs> of the accommodation okay so unsecured loans mean either you don't have an asset or even if you come up with asset it's less value then the loan taken here the loan taken is 7 million but the asset value is 10 million now you are secured but if the other side happened asset value is 7 million you are asking me 10 million okay. now the 7 million forcibly if i sell it may be 6 million right or 5 million but when i'm giving away loan there's an unsecured part now, these are becoming unsecured loans. Okay. Right. At least 75% of the recommendation. For this purpose of the paragraph, market value in respect of motor vehicle and machinery shall mean a valuation obtained during the preceding six months from a value approved by the director and is respected of land building the value decided by a qualified professional valuer. Right. No. And the share and the 5% of capital fund is. Yes. Now, the other side. The single shall not exceed 1% of the core capital. Right. So the percentage will vary for unsecured security, 1% of the core capital. Now, core capital consists of 1% right, of the core capital. Here's, you see, if that is the unsecured, that should be 1% of the core capital. Right. Means what? Capital consists of retained earnings. Capital consists of, uh, finally, even uh, redeemable preference shares. But 
co capital means what paid up ordinary shares right i'll give you the elements of co capital number one is paid up ordinary shares that is the biggest component of co capital then you have non redeemable non cumulative preference shares non redeemable non cumulative preference shares then you have retained earnings right so accumulation of this belongs to your co capital suppose you have paid up ordinary shares plus non redeemable and non cumulative preference shares plus retained earnings let's say you have 100 million okay so your co capital is 100 million how much can you give as unsecured loans percentage is 1 how much how much will you yeah that's 1 million correct right out of 100 just one as clean loans on secured loans right now when we say accommodation now here we are saying the term accommodation what do you mean by accommodations it's a loan facilities under high purchase or lease provision of funds through debt securities such as bonds debentures asset backed securities commercial paper promissory notes or any other right so when i'm saying 1% of accommodation 1% accommodation that can be loans leasing uh loans taken against bonds debentures so the accommodation when i am saying associate company means what a company where the finance company hold 20% or more but less than 50% right now people's leasing and finance plc has invested in people's insurance Seventy-five percent of shares of People's Insurance belongs to People's Leasing Company. Now, my question is: Is People's Insurance a subsidiary of People's Leasing Company? Yes or no? Then why? People's Leasing Company owns. 75% of shares of people's insurance company my question is is people's insurance a subsidiary of people's leasing company so yes or no yes why yes why because people's leasing own more than 50% of people's insurance right people's leasing company owns 35% of people's merchant bank is people's merchant bank a subsidiary of people's leasing company no no why because it is not owning more than 50% right my next question is what is people's merchant bank from people's leasing perspective what kind of company there's a word for it what is that now 
People's Leasing Company owned 35% of People's Merchant Bank. Okay. People's Leasing Company owned 35% of People's Merchant Bank. It's not a subsidy. Agreed. Then what is the relationship known as? Read carefully and tell me the answer. Less than 50, but more than 20. What do you call such a company? Associate company. Well, I'll ask one more question to make your clarifications clear. Sanasa Development Bank. People's Leasing Company owned 5% shares of Sanasa Development Bank. Remember, in certain years, this 5% has made People's Leasing the biggest shareholder of Sanasa Development Bank. Okay. What is the relationship between Sanasa Development and People's Leasing Company? What is the relationship? Is it associate? Is it an associate company? No, no, that's it. So there is no relationship. Yeah, in certain years, People's leasing on the biggest shares of Sunset Development Bank, but the percentage is 5%. So there is no such relationship. Okay. Now that part is very clear. Now you know what is accommodation, right? Now, other things. These things should be valued by qualified professional value, who he is. Right. Then, relative, a subsidiary, a director. So, these terms are defined. Then, read this carefully. After that, we'll discuss.
okay no finance company shall grant any accommodation to a director and or a relative of a director of a finance company to its holding company on the security of its own shares or on the security of shares of its any subsidiary companies to purchase its own shares on the guarantee or indemnity of a director of the finance company a relative of a director or any employee of the finance company notwithstanding the provisions uh, number two subject to the prior approval of the director a finance company may grant accommodation in accordance with any scheme for the time being in force for the purchase of subscription of full pit okay provided that the aggregate principal amount of such accommodation outstanding at any moment shall not exceed the equivalent okay continue number four the finance company may grant accommodation to its subsidiary companies associate subject to its okay single borrower limit right no finance company shall recover on any accommodation charges of any description other than interest in excess of five percent every finance company shall submit the direction director within three months after end of each financial year details of all accommodations outstanding at the end of financial year on a format given by the director okay now people's leasing company offers a facility known as margin trading what do you mean by margin trading i think we have discussed when we were discussing shares if not tell me so people's leasing company has a facility called margin trading facility what do you mean by this okay just tell me yes or no have i discussed about margin trading in my lecture session say yes or no if i have not discussed i'll discuss it now just tell me yes or no margin trading okay good right now margin trading is a type of loan that a bank or the finance can offer finance company can offer to its customers the only security accepted is shares okay and the only purpose of getting loan is to buy shares so we can say like this margin trading is a facility where one can obtain loans to buy further shares by securitizing existing share for you right so this is margin trading okay margin trading is a facility where one can obtain loans to buy further shares by securitizing existing share portfolio right? if you read annual reports please look into top 20 shareholders list in any annual report or any uh, quarter report one information one type of information that should be provided to the investor is top 20 shareholders list right in this top 20 shareholders list if you find slash accounts like this x y z Pereira, slash is a land bank right in the top 20 shareholders list if something like this comes appears 
EYX Pereira slash Ceylon Bank means what? This number of shares belong to EYX Pereira on a loan obtained by Ceylon Bank. So that is called margin facility. Right? A bank or the finance can come can provide loans to a customer to buy shares by considering an existing share portfolio of his or her as a security. That is called margin trading. Here we say a finance company cannot accept its own shares, its own shares as a security. Right. How it cannot give a loan to buy its own shares? Now, my question is you start up a margin trading account with a finance company, let's say with People's Leasing Company. You have already purchased one million shares of JKH. You have already have one million shares of JKH. And let's assume price of JKH is 200 rupees. Right? Now, this is your security. Right? This is your security. How much? What is the security value? You have 1 million shares of John Kills Holdings, where each share is 100, 200 rupees. How much security you are offering? What is the value of the security? Rupee value. What is the rupee value? Very good. The rupee value is 200 million. Out of this 200 million security you are providing, another 200 million I'll give you as a loan only to buy shares. Okay? Suppose you find the share market is going to boom, there will be a bull market, right? So you have already invested 200 million. I will give you another 200 million only to buy shares. Suppose you find a company called Expo is trading at 20 rupees per share and you will buy 10 million shares. Okay. At this value, you will buy 10 million shares. What is the total portfolio value now? What is the total portfolio value? You have John Pills, you have Expo. What is the total portfolio value now? You own money 200 million and I'm giving you another 200 million. You have only two shares. Yes, one is John Kills, the other is Expo. Now your real value is 400 million. Suppose Expo within one week reach 40. What was trading at 20 now within one week 40. How much profit you are making out of this? Now you sell entire expo quantity. How much? Let's forget interest at the moment. How much are you making out of this deal at within one week? 200 million. Very good. That's what margin trading is. When the bull market is there, when you can do proper predictions and calculations, you can easily become rich by utilizing margin facility. Okay. Another person come to people's leasing company. He also want to buy 200 million Expo shares. Right? He also has sense that Expo is going to go up. What he securitize is shares of people's leasing company where the share is he has purchased at 10. Okay, let's say share price is 10 
and he has 20 million shares but how much loan will people's leasing company give him to buy expo shares he has people's leasing company share where let's assume a share is trading at 10 rupees and he has 20 million shares that amount is ready to securitize how much people's leasing company will give him to buy expo shares tell me the value how much will people's leasing company offer So one person, his existing portfolio is 200 million, entirely John Kills Holdings, and he securitized that with people's leasing, got a margin facility, got another 200 million to buy Expo. Out of that, he made a profit of 200 million. Hearing that, you also come to people's leasing with your existing portfolio, where your portfolio consists of entirely 200 million shares of people's leasing company. And you ask a loan to buy shares, a margin facility. How much will people's leasing company give you to buy Expo shares? Read this part very carefully and tell me how much. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, if it was any other share that he's offering to people's leasing, he could have done that. But no finance company shall give a loan on the security of its own shares or the subsidy share. Therefore, People's Leasing Company will not give you any margin facility against its own shares. So the amount is zero. Got it? Are you clear on that? If you come up with any other company's shares, People's Leasing will consider it as asset security and give you further money to buy shares here since it's the same company's share that cannot be that cannot be considered as a security therefore no loan will be given against the security of its own shares the same thing will happen if you have shares of people's insurance plc even if you have 200 million shares of people's leasing company uh, people's insurance company that cannot be considered as a security but if you go to another finance company or the bank that will be considered as a security got it okay now why these directions are there if not <coughs> companies will unnecessarily increase its share value and declare rights. Okay, please read very carefully.
โอเควิ่งออกมาเลยดีเรกเลยคำถามหนึ่งสองสามสี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่สี่ At any time exceed 40% of issued orders of such investee company, and the aggregate amount of invested in the issued orders of capital of company shall not at any time exceed 25%. Okay, right. My simple question is: Can a finance company purchase shares of another company as an investment? Say yes or no. Can a finance company buy shares of another listed company? As an investment, say yes or no. Might you read very carefully? A finance company may can invest in ordinary shares of any company. Subject to certain restrictions, what is the exceed the maximum limit out of the capital? That's there, but you can invest. You can invest. Okay. Now, if you happen to go through the top twenty shareholders list of selling co insurance PLC, you will find number six position belongs to CDB Finance Company. Okay, so the finance company can invest shares in. Uh, invest in shares of another company as an investment. Right. So. Right. So you can read it carefully. Dance is yes, you can. Now, liquid assets. What do you mean by liquid? What do you mean by liquid? What do you mean by liquid? Liquid in uh, finance. I'm not asking liquid in general. What do you mean by liquidity? What do you mean by liquidity? Liquid liquidity can be easily converted into cash with minimum effort. That is liquid. Okay. Now assets can be liquid or illiquid. Yeah, very good. Now assets can be illiquid. For an example, if I buy shares of Harish Chandra Mills, oh. Dilma Tea Company, that is Ceylon Tea. Okay. Or if I buy shares of Ashok Leyland Company, I'll find it very difficult to sell. Right? If I have a huge quantity of shares of these companies, I will find it very difficult to sell in the market. Why? These shares are illiquid. You don't have much shares of these companies in the market. At the same time, they are very expensive. At the same time, very few buyers for these shares. But if I buy shares of John Kills Holdings, Dialog, almost all the banks. So I would just put the name Commercial Bank. Right? Uh, I'll find it very easy to buy, very easy to sell. Means what? These shares are highly liquid. Okay, liquid assets. 
every finance company shall maintain a minimum holding of liquid assets as defined in section 46 of this which shall not at a loss okay 10 percent of the outstanding value of time deposits 15 percent of the outstanding value of savings deposits accepted by such company at the close of the business on such day okay means what when i am accepting deposits from you i can use these deposits to buy illiquid assets like these shares okay but when i am running a finance company out of my savings accounts total aggregated value 15 percent i have to keep as <coughs> liquid assets say government securities government securities are very liquid 15 percent of the outstanding value of savings deposits accepted by such company should be maintained as liquid asset okay. why it is required let's say now these are the liquid assets treasury bills government securities means what they don't pay us much interest interest return is very less but they are very liquid therefore a finance company naturally would keep its uh, money in assets ideally you would give it away as loans where the uh, return is very high but still certain percentages you have to keep in very liquid assets like government securities say treasury bills why if a customer demand back back his deposit you must be able to pay him so you must be able to easily convert back them to cash so every finance company should maintain specific percentage of liquid assets against time deposits and savings so the percentage 10 percent 15 percent please remember that okay now you can see how much the regulator is trying to protect the general public okay if not what will happen I'll put a finance company with very less capital from my end and I'll get most deposits. I'll canvas deposits as much as possible. Then I will pump that depositors money into my other businesses. And I may not manage them very well. If that happened, I will not be able to recover. And that's not a big issue to me. Why? I don't lose much just five percent out of that maybe my salary plus dividends within one year would help me to uh, take them out the balance is shouldered by general public this is why regulator is putting all these directions to protect stability of the finance industry to protect the investor the protect uh, the shareholder to protect the depositor right writing off loans and advances so we try our best to recover the loans we have given but very naturally certain amounts we find it hardly difficult to recover if so there is no point keeping them as asset finally we try to do everything possible when everything fails, what will I do? I'll write off them my books. There's no point of keeping them. Therefore, what I do is I'll write off them. But how much I'm going to write off? What if I write off? If I write off relative of director's loans undertaking of a director any subsidiary investment or loans any person who is a manager officer or an employee of a company registered under finance company act means what i am directly using others money and exploiting them to prevent that this restriction is placed on writing off loans and advances so related parties cannot do that okay 
deposits. We said finance companies can accept deposits. A finance company shall not accept any deposit repayable on demand or any time deposit repayable after a period of less than one month from the date of receipt. Okay. Yeah, you can accept deposits, but the, at least one month must be there. More than 60 months. Okay. So all your deposits must be more than one month, less than 60 months. Every finance company shall furnish to every depositor a certificate in respect of each and every time a deposit received, which for all purpose shall be deemed to be an acknowledgement. Okay. So deposits, direction on deposits. When you are issuing a FD certificate or a renewal notice, it should be signed by two authorized officers. And this information must be there printed on the certificate. Registered name and address of the finance company, date of deposit, renewal of deposit, name, NIC, amount, annual interest rate that must be clearly mentioned, date on which deposit is repayable, name of the officers who sign and acknowledge, serial number, and the account number of the deposit. So central bank has put everything in black and white. Now, even the deposit certificate, what should be printed on that? Means what? The regulator is trying its best to protect general public. Why do you do that? To protect the financial system stability. Right? So, if one finance company collapse, that will badly affecting on others. So the efforts are taken to protect the entire financial system. <coughs> Transactions with directors. A finance company shall not, without approval of director, conduct any business of transaction of a director where the total value exceeds 50,000 per month, 500,000 per annum. Right. And for this purpose, who is a relative, shall mean a spouse or dependent child of an individual. The, okay. Now, a finance company cannot do any business transaction with a relative of a director which is more than 50,000 per month or 500,000 per annum without prior approval from the director of monetary board, NBFI sector. Now this is SLDIS, Sri Lanka Deposit Insurance. So you have to deposit insurance covered. Information system security policy. Okay. Right. So far we have been discussing about the directions by Central Bank. Earlier we talked about corporate governance before I took this mid-exam review. We talked about corporate governance. Now I'm asking you a question. Okay, think very seriously. Directors of a company can declare their own remuneration. Top management of a finance company can declare their own remuneration. They decide their own remuneration because that is part of management. Right? You all know if you are given the liberty to decide your own salary, you will try to get the maximum without assigning proper tasks as a responsibility. Okay. So my question is, how do you avoid malpractices taking place in remuneration, remunerations on 
corporate management and directors of a company, directors of a finance company. can send me your answer after that we'll continue <clears throat> Now, these kind of questions were asked in certain past papers. So the answer is, you can get approval at the shareholders meeting on salary and remuneration of directors. So there is a control. But we'll continue. <clears throat> Information security policy. Right. Now, Today, we are dealing a lot in IT. Right? At the same time, we have heard a term called hackers. We have seen many movies where hackers intervene to the activities of banks and finance companies. Therefore, a bank and finance company should try its best to protect its databases systems so that is covered by information security policy now i'll tell you some very good example from a movie a tamil movie that is uh the iron curtain in this movie it shows an average person a government officer a soldier or the captain army captain he goes back to his village and he wants to take a loan to meet the marriage cost of his sister. And he needs one million. He goes to few banks with his father and they find they can't take a loan. So the banks are not ready to give him a loan of one million. When he comes out of a particular bank, he get a call to his mobile number and this unknown dialer ask, are you looking for the 1 million loan? He says, yes. Then he said, okay, fine. We'll arrange a loan from XYZ bank. Right? Then this person says, I went to XYZ bank, but they rejected my loan facility. Then he says, okay, fine. We'll arrange a loan. How do you do that? Then he name a person who is just selling SIM cards in front of the bank. It's just a movie, but the message is very clear. When he go to this meet this guy who is selling SIM cards under umbrella in front of this bank, he says, "Okay, fine. We'll arrange a loan against a company name." He said, "I don't have a company." He says, "Okay, fine. We have an advertising company registered, and you be the owner of it." And uh, if you sign these documents within two days, 
you will get one million loan. Then the army captain asked, okay, what is the benefit to you by helping me? Then they said, okay, very first time you get one million deposited in your account, pay us 10%, 100,000. Finally, he agrees. And within two days, after signing all these documents, he get a SMS message. One million deposited to his account. He's very happy. Next, he get a message, 100,000 removed from his account. He knew, he has promised, he has given his consent to that illegally. Okay, so that has nothing to do with the bank. Then after two days, he uh, asked his father to go to the bank, give the PIN number and to withdraw uh, just another 50,000. Father goes to the bank, check PIN number, check the account details and call his son, army captain and says, son, not a single rupee in your account. Then father, then the son blames father and said, you, uh, how many times I teach you to take money from ATM card, you can't do that. He personally comes and check, not a single rupee is there. Then he goes to the bank and check. Then the bank said, okay, you have withdrawn your money. He said, no, I didn't. Right? So the story goes on. But it shows something very clear. Today, okay, somewhere in the mid, very clearly they ask you, the customer, not to share any of your information with any person who seems to be appearing from a bank. Today, when you are checking my credit card balance in certain banks, they don't say it. Their call center is not directly saying, but send me a message to my SMS, registered texts. Right? And they are not asking a lot of secret information. But hackers try their best to penetrate into the system. In this movie, Il Butire, shows this hacking system perfectly well. A threat to banks and finance company when they don't have this information system security policy. Okay, so what is that? When we get into our IT flow, there's a very good picture, a framed picture, and see. Some things are not meant to be shared. Toothbrushes are shown. Right? Your shoe, uh, toothbrush is not meant to be shared with anyone. That's your personal thing. In the same manner, your password, your system access password is a personal thing. Don't ever share that with anyone else. That is the meaning. Okay. <clears throat> Every finance company shall classify all information and data within the finance company to reflect its level of confidentiality or importance to the organization and implement security measures according to the level of confidentiality needed. Every finance company shall create awareness among the staff with adequate training and awareness of programs on aspects, aspects such as information systems, security access controls, procurement and maintain procedures, network management, business continuity plan, information systems audit and software licensing. Okay. Now I'll get back to this movie. In this movie, captain is asking from the bank, how have you withdrawn this money? The bank said, we have not withdrawn anything. We have given you the ATM and every withdrawal you should get a sms alert he said okay i got the first sms alert one hundred thousand. then they take a print out of all the withdrawals yes that's there then now he's promised after that no withdrawal sms was sent to him okay then he go behind a person who is selling SIM cards. Okay, so that 
data penetration was not done through the bank but to the through the mobile phone sim card that sim seller has disappeared he used all his intelligence and connections in the army and find that sim seller under the umbrella is selling sims somewhere in front of another bank he get hold and finally he go to the top and the top guy in this movie known as white devil he said okay you can't do anything against me right you being a state employee knowingly cheated the bank saying you are having a business that itself in us is enough for you to demote from your army designation if you take any further step you will lose your government job but this army captain moves forward complained against him he lose his government job but he continue in this movie it shows this person the hacking master has started his business by the first thing he was a junk seller he has purchased lot of discarded computers of a bank during y2k and he has removed most of these motherboards and taken data out of that means what a bank has to be very careful when you are procuring computers as well as when you are disposing hardware okay. if you don't destroy the data perfectly someone else will collect this information and get hold of the individuals okay now let's read this part every finance company shall clearly identify and list the assets associated with processing and communication of information example hardware software communication equipment and assign the responsibility of securing all information system assets to an individual who has been authorized by the management as follows implement different level of access controls based on authority level to ensure confidentiality to information security of systems right to protect all important servers and power and telecommunication cables ensuring that all sensitive data and or licensed software have been removed from from all items of equipment prior to disposal got it okay now in this movie the hacker first entered to the banking system through this disposed computer hardware right ensure that all sensitive data and license software have been removed from all items of equipment prior to disposal okay next secure the premises where it system data centers are located by limiting physical access to authorized personnel and maintain a record of entry and exit for data centers with proper identification established and recorded prior to any entry yeah if you enter to our it floor you must have the card access unauthorized access will not take place and physical access time duration to whom you have meant everything is recorded right so that is taking place in it right so that is written in black and white access controls all what we have to do is follow these access controls given number 6 every finance company shall have procedure for purchasing and maintaining commercial software these procedures shall include okay you cannot buy computers without operating license right so you have to purchase install and upgrade the same secure hardware develop testing and maintenance of in house developed software every finance company shall have security policy for network management the security policy consists of combating cyber crime i have not seen any single movie on cyber crimes but surprisingly 
I have seen many, many movies on cyber crimes in Tamil. Okay. Uh, Till it took fire. There is another movie that shows how this takes place. Cyber crime. In this movie, there is a police officer who is evaluating and inspecting on cyber crimes. Due to that, he get the access to listening to other personal mobile phones. Now what happened? He, by mastering this listening to personal calls, start to blackmail people. At the same time, randomly, he check phone calls right? because he was given the task of curbing cyber crimes and he becomes a master of cyber crimes. And he started to blackmail people, business people and obtain money. And he has a very small connected team with whom he share his information. One of his team member make a wild gesture. Why don't you listen to your wife's personal calls? That starts another stage of cyber crimes. Okay. Right. Combating cyber crimes. Now these days you hear all of a sudden dot LK websites so are hacked. Right. Now these things cannot should not happen in the banking system therefore every possible efforts should have been taken to combat cyber crime e-commerce and intranet information security security of any other networks especially with automated teller machines but then we are entering into another very important area business continuity plan okay once again We'll talk a little bit on politics, right? After 30 years of winning and surviving, LTTE was completely destroyed in 2009. Tell me one valid reason why LTTE could, LTT was perfectly removed from terrorist activities. One failure of their side. Tell me that failure. BCP, Business Continuity Plan. Right. LTT was completely destroyed. Contrast to that, another similar organization, JVP. In 1987, they were completely destroyed. 89. But within two years, they came back and won 40 seats in parliament. Tell me why JVP could continue, but LTT could not continue. One very simple reasoning. What was that? We are talking about continuity, business continuity plan. JVP continued, LTT was completely destroyed, but both were somewhat similar in the operations. Tell me one simple reason why LTT could be totally eliminated. Think and tell me. We are talking about business continuity. One terrorist organization continued. The other could not. I think the biggest and the strongest was the entity that could not continue. There was one simple reason. Tell me that. I 
told you in certain areas what happens in the power game applies to banks applies to corporates as well i gave you example from enron yeah for jvp one of their leader could get out of sri lanka go to india and live in european countries until they get hold a democratic system ltte although they were scattered in different countries one final moment they all got together in one small area in sri lanka and all of them were killed means what you must have a business continuity plan every finance company shall have a bcp covering disaster management and risk analysis which shall implemented after testing and accepting the following assigning maintenance of bcp to authorized officers prepare the backup policy based on importance of relevant systems in which the necessary backups being tested periodically okay you have heard something called br sites br sites have you heard something like that say yes or no br sites have you heard or not okay right right okay so in banks we have something called disaster disaster recovery site in short let's say due to unavoidable reasons if you cannot perform duties at head office there must be well identified well prepared location elsewhere where you can log in and do the business as usual suppose all of a sudden the area where your head office is located is 100% isolated due to covid or something very terrible right now you cannot go to your head office the computers and uh, system it flow nothing is available means what if so you won't be able to do business until that isolated area uh, the curfew imposed by government is lifted you no know? there is dr site far away right at least 30 km away suppose a bomb blast earthquake flood tsunami something happens and affect the operations of head office you have far away site a dr site where you can go and work ltt their head office was destroyed they were not having a dr site elsewhere jvp was destroyed here but one agent went to a dr site and started operations and he could establish a democratic system where they give up to 40 mp set parliament okay you must have something out a little bit away out of danger zone so you can continue your business plan without interruptions every finance company shall conduct periodic information system audits but right. every finance company shall comply with legal and policy requirement related to software licensing okay we'll talk a little bit on bcp right tell me the dangers that can affect to the business continuity now you have heard about ltt you have heard about jvp right you know what is meant by disasters right now i'm asking what can be causing or interrupting business continuity tell me different reasons that may cause interruptions to business continuity tell me causes that will affect 
to the continue continuity of a business think about ltt think about jvp okay what factors will affect badly to you think about covid 19 right think about flood think about tsunami think about cyber crimes okay now tell me what factors affect to the business continuity okay i would divide them into two factors man made okay man made and act of god act of god means things that happen beyond man control now you said malpractices very good that's a man made one frauds malpractices that's man made what else okay first we'll look at man made disasters tell me as much as possible man made disasters very good theft continue i talked about movies now sometimes theft can be so terrible that you cannot run the business further i talked about barring bank nick leeson right Theft is one, fraud is another, malpractices. What else? What else? Man made disasters, theft, fraud. What else? We talked about some Tamil movies. What do you get out of that? A nice word. Cyber. Cyber crimes, right? What else? Man made disasters. Bomb explosions, very good. Very good. What else? Hmm. Right. Now tell me, act of God. Acts of God, that's how we. Acts of God. Beyond the damages, disasters beyond our control. Tell me some of them. Yeah, natural disasters. What are they? Just give me some names quickly. Flood, tsunami. Right, good. Right, good. Cyclones, okay. Now I'm asking you some questions. Fire. Can fire be a serious threat? Can fire be a serious threat? Yes. If so, under your BCP, there must be fire drills taking place right. i once visited a very good young finance company and when i visited certain floors there's a digital board where certain messages pass like a uh, today's dollar rate interest rate then all of a sudden an employee's face appears with his contact number wearing a fire jacket XYZ Pereira, today's fire warden, means what? If this building, uh, fire breaks out in this building, call him. He will handle this. He's the authorized person today, means what? That preparation is required for BCP, business continuity plan. Okay. Now we talked about LTT and JVP. What happened to LTT is after killing the all leaders, there was no authorized person to take leadership. Why JVP survived this after killing almost all the leaders, one guy left Sri Lanka and he is the authorized leader to run the business. What do you call this? We have called, uh, discussed this earlier. Succession plan. What do you mean by succession plan?
What do you mean by succession plan? So LTT was not having that or was not honoring to that. Contrast that, JVP did it. What do you mean by succession plan? Yes, grooming a person to take over. As long as you do that, you are having BCP, business continuity plan. Now, I'm referring to uh, the Indian or the Buddhist literature. As per Buddhist literature, King Angulimala wanted to invade Lichavi, a state run by democratic senate. And he want blessing to invade this country. But Buddha asked only one question from Anand. Is Lichavi still following their democratic principles? Means what? Later on, there was an emperor by the name of Ashok in Mayur dynasty. He was invading country by country and finally his last war was with Kaling. Kaling was a Senate-owned system, a Senate-governed system. Means what? You cannot kill one individual who is the authorized leader and claim the throne. Why? In these systems, there were hundred and more, thousands or more princes and they had to get together in a Senate and take decisions. Means what? Such systems cannot be destroyed. That was a thinking. Anyway, that is BC. If you hand over the power to one individual person and if he dies, that institute fails. Instead, you develop a system where one after the other is groomed up to take the position. Killing one individual will not be the end of the institution. That is BCP, business continuity plan. Okay, we'll move further. <clears throat> Interest rates, right? So interest rate has a ceiling. The weighted average yield applicable to 364 day treasury bill issued during the quarter on a time deposit accept on renewal shall not exceed, right? So percentages are given. Means what? A uh, ceiling is set on interest rates as well. This one last week we discussed fitness and propriety of the directors. So you can <clears throat> go through that in your free time. Auditor accounts. Every finance company shall appoint an auditor to audit the following financial statements. <clears throat> <coughs> Reporting requirements. Reporting of information on the financial information of registered finance companies. Okay. So the submission that's given. Transfer of assets, finance companies. No finance company shall transfer or alienate any of its assets for any consideration other than for the monetary consideration. No finance company shall transfer any of its assets of a value more than rupees 50,000 at a price less than the prevailing market value without the prior permission of central bank. That was a direction earlier. No finance company shall purchase or acquire any movable property, but any right title on interest they are in exceeding in the aggregate at any time, the amount outstanding in the loans obtained in the specific purpose. 50% of the capital funds of the finance company. Okay. So when you are acquiring immovable properties, that cannot be more than 50% of capital funds. Accrued interest. No finance company shall take into account as income any accrued interest on loan. Okay. 
deposit incentives. Any incentive scheme for soliciting deposits from general public shall be within the acceptable practices. Bestow on the depositors on real benefit and not something illusionary, not lead to unfair and unethical competing, not weaken prudential requirements, be operated directly by the company, not to have an adverse impact on profitability through excessive increase in costs of mobilizing deposits. Okay, now we want to see more deposits coming into us. Therefore, we can increase our asset base. Now, how do we increase our deposits? By giving you gifts. Sometimes it's like the gift cost is too much than what we get. So, this statement is there. Not have an adverse impact on the profitability of the company through excessive increase in cost of mobilizing deposits. Okay. So by mobilizing deposits and saying we are having the biggest deposit base, you cannot run losses into losses. Incentives. Okay. Finance companies close off business. No finance company shall close its office for business on any day of the week from Monday to Friday, which is not a holiday declared by Ceylon Chamber of Commerce without the prior approval in writing of the director. Okay. So you cannot close business without prior approval from the director if it's not a holiday declared by Chamber of Commerce. Structural changes. No finance company to which license has been issued shall without the prior approval in writing establish a subsidiary. Commence a business, new business. Enhance or reduce its issued capital. Sell its business. Acquire. Change the memorandum of associate, amalgamate, restructure. Shifting closure of branch and officers. No finance company to which a license has been issued shall without the prior approval in writing, open a new place, change the location, close any of its businesses. Stimulus packages. Notwithstanding the provisions of any other direction issued by the Monetary Board Act, a beneficiary finance company shall not do any of the following during the restructuring period. Grant loans, invest, guarantee pledge. Okay, let's read it. Grant loans, credit facilities, or any type of financial accommodation, including grants, donations, and transfer, either directly or indirectly to a related party. Now, do you, you know who is a related party? It can be a subsidiary, associate, or the close relative of a director. Invest either directly or indirectly in shares of a related company. Guarantee or pledge for a related company. Make any bonus payments within cash or otherwise to any member or staff of any of the beneficiary company. Pay dividends on shares whereby cash or otherwise. Advertisements. Every advertisement in published print media, excluding hoardings, billboards, and banners directly or indirectly soliciting deposits from general public, okay, shall contain that is a licensed company, date of incorporation, credit rating, periodicity of payment, terms and conditions. Okay, right. Now, last week, we looked at questions and answers. Right? We looked at certain areas, product-wise, unit trusts, primary dealers, payment systems. Uh, then we talked about insurance. Right. Certain products we have to do. I have microfinance, then little bit on cooperative societies, the differences between operating lease, finance lease, and higher purchase. Product wise, I have to do a little bit. Then we saw recent trend on asking more questions from corporate governance related. We have covered that. Then I showed you many other directions are also asked. So you need not to buy hard direct directions. Let's say number one of year 2009. No, you need not to buy hard. But the essence you have to get. Why these directions are taking place? 
BCP. What do you mean by BCP? What do you mean by succession plan? Right? What do you, why do you want to have a information system protection policy? What is meant by DR site? Right? So these things you should know. Go through the entire set of slides which I have given you. Don't buy heart, get and understand. So when we are discussing these questions and answers, you can understand how you had to write for them. Before that, you must have a good reading on this area. Right. So after completing that, we can end the entire session. And I again ask you to get updated on recent things. Now, last paper, I showed you example, the right issue is discussed and approved in what meeting? AGM or EGM? EGM. AGM means annual general meeting. Things that are discussed on continuing basis, on yearly basis, are discussed at AGM. Today we talked about remuner remuneration of directors, appointing of auditors. That's discussed in AGM. EGM, to discuss something extraordinary, which is not happening on annual basis. Let's say right issue. It's not taking place on annual basis. On such, you may go for the EGM. Suppose you are going to merge with another company. You are going to discuss that at an EGM, EGM, Extraordinary General Meeting. These things, please keep on updating. Right. So we discussed something very important, a very uh, influential area today, and which is covered by many directions. Go through them. And... Uh, Next week, we're looking to leasing, higher purchase, operating lease, finance lease, uh, cooperative societies, and a little bit on microfinance. With that, we can complete almost a good percentage. Once again, we can move into question and answer sessions after that. Okay, so I'll end today's session. Thank you.